Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. As I'm filming this video, there's a massive tornado outbreak that is underway in the uh, United States in uh, what's commonly known as Tornado Alley. So we're talking about the uh, you know north northeast parts of Texas over into Oklahoma right now. What I'm going to do is show you the conditions that are that are um, underway right now in order to cause this massive tornado outbreak. I'll relate it to the jet streams, I'll relate it to dry lines, um, and uh, I'll relate it to, well, we know that climate change is putting a lot more water vapor up into the atmosphere. For every degree Celsius rise in temperature, or 1.8 degree Fahrenheit rise in temperature, there's 7% more water vapor in the atmosphere. Now this water vapor, so that basically, I mean, the oceans are warmer, there's more evaporation. So this water vapor goes up into the atmosphere, carries enormous amounts of latent heat. And when it condenses into water droplets and clouds, it releases this massive amount of energy. So storms that we're getting right now are much more intense and severe than they used to be. The jet stream is a very um, wavy type, uh, has a very wavy configuration right now over the US. It's very, very fast. It's more indicative of a jet stream in the winter. And it's, it's creating, there, there's a trough so low pressure area going over lots of the central US. And whenever we have a clash of hot areas, hot humid areas, there's hot humid air coming up from the Gulf of Mexico, coming over from the Pacific. Then there's this jet stream trough bringing down this cold air. So we're getting all of this cold, dry air in conflict with the humid, um, hot air from other places. And when you have all these air masses in close proximity to each other, you get lots of convective uplift. The energy, the CAPE, it's called convective available potential energy in the atmosphere is enormous. It's over 5,000 joules per kilogram in, in some regions. And I'll explain how that's contributing. That energy is being released into these storms. And um, I'll show you basically, you know, how people are tracking it, you know, and how you can have a look at it and some of the good websites that, that you can look at to, to follow this ongoing um, outbreak. So the Arctic is warming like crazy. So the jet streams are slower and wavier. And this wavy jet stream right now is parked over the US and is contributing greatly to this tornado swarm. The frequency, severity, and duration of extreme weather events like uh, torrential rain events leading to floods, droughts in other places. That's very, very rapidly on the rise in this, in, in, in this era of abrupt climate change. So let's get right to the uh, data. And, uh, you know, you can follow, I highly recommend that you go to these websites online and, and have a look. So this is my, uh, blog. If you just go to paulbeckwith.net, you can find uh, the uh, most recent post. I talked about hunkering down for the deluge and flood in the climate casino, standing in front of a nice um, cherry blossom tree. And uh, yeah, so, so that was my previous thing. So we are getting massive floods in the U.S. Midwest. The Mississippi has been under flood for a record length of time. Of course, Ottawa is having its floods. You know, there's climate, there, there, there's strange weather patterns around the entire world. Um, and they're increasing in number and they're getting stranger and more outside of the norms because of our undergoing, un, because of abrupt climate change, which is ongoing. Okay, so not only are there these flooding events, but this is the, this is basically 
the Storm Prediction Center, the NOAA, National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration. Uh, it's the National Weather Service page. It's the Storm Prediction Center. And here we have an overview. So this is the area that has high probability. Now, this is a very, very unusual situation where we're on the highest scale of severity and warning um, for um, for extreme weather, and in this case, tornadoes. Um, you know, this is the area, there's a radar map superimposed that is just uh, playing through here. Um, so let's have a look at what the uh, Storm Prediction Center has been saying with the, the forecast. So, so this is the um, area here of the risk, high risk, moderate, enhanced, slight, and marginal, the different colors. This is quite a very, quite a large region here. We have uh, Texas into Oklahoma here. These are the population centers that are threatened. This is the day one convective outlook, which is today. Um, so this is the categorical view. You can have a tornado view with the probabilities, the wind and the hail, and you can see that they're all coinciding down below. Okay, so um, what is also good is you can put the pop you can show the population densities. So the black areas are areas of high population density. So you can see the population density that are affected by the storm. Um, these are the cities here. And actually, if I show the population too, you can see you know, around Oklahoma City is is this this area here that's most heavily populated in this high risk zone. Okay, this website is under high demand right now, so it's not always the, you know, it's going in and out of responsiveness, so I don't know. Um, it'll probably come back in a second here. Let's go back to this. This is still okay. This is the, this is the storm report so far, uh, updated. Um, to, so there's been uh, uh, 75 reports, 39 with hail, 26 with wind, 10 tornado reports. So 10 tornadoes spotted on the ground. There's all kinds of storm chasers down there in that region. Going back to here, let's see if we can get this to work. Okay, so population density here, the cities that are in the region, this is useful. This is um, different areas, different uh, zoning areas. These, these are the, it's gone out again. Oh, come on. Rivers here, you can see the rivers, you can see the interstates, the counties, and different regions. So this, this information is very useful for uh, locating where the, where the risk regions are. Um, and again, if we go back here to the overview, yeah, so this, this site is, there's so much demand right now because this is an ongoing um, critical event and many many people are are um many many people are on this site so uh i can just go home if i just go back here we go okay there we've got it again okay so storm prediction center spc you can just google it and and have a look and now these updates uh you can get um so this is day one this is what's expected tomorrow, um, enhanced risk here. You know, so the zone is shifting from day to day. There's a day three outlook day and days four to eight outlook. So there's day four, day five, nothing, day six, seven, and eight. Okay, so you can go back, you can get these different outlooks for different days. And of course, uh, day one is where we are here and you can get the different you know tornado wind hail like i said and the different uh information here this is uh rivers i believe yes this is the rivers this is the interstate highways the different counties and this is a fema regions and i'm not sure what this one is okay different um, zones on the map but this is the most useful one the population and the cities okay to see where where uh, which cities are affected okay now, of course, when something's happening real time, you go to go to Twitter. So 
I mean, if you go into Twitter, Twitter and you look at hashtag tornado, here's we are, here we are here. Radar Scope is an app I have on my phone and is invaluable. I think I pay it. It's about 10 bucks US per year. Um, and uh, this is the radar signal here showing the lightning. And over here, this is Doppler radar. So the, d the different colors here. So the trick here is, so there's a tornado here that is moving on the ground here. And the reason you can tell is you can see red and green very, very close together. And then it shifts to this uh, lighter color. So this is a Doppler radar. So red will be moving towards or away from the radar, uh, whichever, whichever, wherever the radar happens to be. Um, and um, then green is going uh, the opposite direction from red. Okay, uh, you can look at the scale on the scale here. Um, and basically, so what this is showing is, is a velocity couplet. The velocity is moving in opposite directions very close together in a tight region and this is exactly what happens during a tornado so you can go on here um you know many people have posted under this hashtag there's another uh severe thunderstorm this you can see this is a doppler radar here showing signatures for tornadoes um there's a there's a tornado here um uh, paducah texas um shown here, another one here. Okay, they're all over the place right now. There's another view here. Okay, they're all over the place and uh, there's 57 new results since I last updated this. Okay, so you can just follow these Twitter feeds um, and, and Twitter is the best medium for tracking things sort of real time whether it be uh, talks at a conference or an outbreak of tornadoes like this. So here's the, um, so, so this is a very strong, you know, on the Doppler radar, strong motion towards the radar and away from the radar. So a velocity couplet, likely a tornado in this region. Okay, so um, very, very useful to, to follow. Now, let's have a look at... Um, what's going on from Earth Null School. Okay, so I, if you click on Earth, it's air at the surface. It's surf, so it's surface winds, basically, uh, at present. Now, what you can see is if I focus in on here, you can see the wind is coming up here, and the wind is coming up here, and then it's coming this way. So there's a line here, and there's a line here. So let's see what's going on there. So if we look at temperature, the temperature on both sides of this line here are roughly, it's a bit warmer on this side, it's a bit cooler here, okay. Uh, let's keep going, relative humidity. Look at the difference here, okay. So the rel it's 17% relative humidity here, 44% here. 15% here, 51% here. 14% here, 80% here. Okay, so what this is known as, this is called the dry line. The humidity is vastly different on either side. This is the wet side. This is the moist, wet air coming up from the Gulf of Mexico. This is the dry air coming over the, the land. And they're meeting here, basically, along this dry line. And... Um, there's also a, a, a difference figuration here. Uh, you know, this is also like a, a dry line as well. Okay, so what we see here is, let's have a look at the jet stream. So if we go to 250 millibar and winds, okay, so we've got a very, very powerful jet stream. We've got a strong trough here, low pressure area. This is really spinning up uh, these storms. This is perfect conditions to generate these storms. And look at the powerful trough here. The, like I said, the jet streams are slower and wavier. They're much wavier like this because of the greatly warming Arctic compared to the equator. And uh, so, so that's a very, very powerful situation for generating uh, tornado activity. And again, if we go back to the surface and the temperature, not much change from side to side, the humidity, a huge change. Thank you.